Welcome back to Real Terms for AI, where we point out to you over and over, and sometimes even over, that a lot of AI is ultimately software engineering with different vocabulary and a little bit of non-determinism. It really is, Jason. Aja, what are we going to do today? So I thought since we have the light board, we could both draw out an architecture for an agent, and then we can compare and contrast our different approaches. I'm cool with that, but I think we should do a coding agent. <sighs> Why? There are so many coding agents that exist. Why would we build one ourselves? One, because I like the pain and suffering. Second, because we all use so many of these tools, I think it's good to know ways that we can modify them to best suit our use cases. Okay, well, let's both draw a coding agent. Let's do it. You done? You can't rush a masterpiece. So, we went completely different directions with that prompt. Let's start with that implementation. Okay, okay, see it's simple. The prompt comes in, something like, I don't know, build a calculator. The LLM makes a plan, it feeds that plan to a tool or another model or something that generates the code, the code gets sent to something that executes the code, that tries to run it, and then it sends the errors in any output back to the generate code function, and that tries again to generate the code based on the data it just got, and we go back and forth like this until it works, and then we send the result to the original LLM that made the plan, and then we send it to the user, and the user's happy. So, what happens when this gets stuck going back and forth? Um, you mean like, if it generates an error, tries to fix it, can't fix it? Yep. Yeah, no, that's a problem. Mm, I could probably fix that by instead of having these two go back and forth, have it go back to the agent each step of the way so the agent can evaluate if it's making progress and maybe modify the plan or give the generate code method more input to make it better. But then, but then it'll be good. Then it'll be good? Okay. Another question for you then. So what happens if the generated code doesn't actually address what we've asked for in our original plan. Um, that's a possibility. Yes. So how did you tackle this? You know, it's actually not that different, but I think we have a few different things here that we can talk about. So when I was designing this agent, I was thinking, what would day zero developer actually need to be successful? So the first thing I do is I start to augment with some context, so things like my code base, you know, maybe rules, maybe other you know, model context protocol things that I would want to connect to and give that to essentially my, my agent here because a junior dev isn't going to be able to write good code if they don't know what I'm actually expecting. Okay, I follow. So you could also potentially like add things that we talked about in other episodes like conversation history that might, in this metaphor, capture the conversations a junior dev might have with their mentor. Okay, yeah. so you augment the prompt with additional context in this step. We talked about that before. Then what? So the first thing we do is we actually ask our large language model to make a high-level plan. And think of this as like asking you know, a developer, hey, what are the five things that you need to do? Because any reasonably complex coding task isn't going to be just a single step to actually get there. Then we move through the plan step by step and using essentially the similar loop over here. And it's very similar. We have something where we're creating a plan or orchestrating the loop. We're having code execution. And we even have an evaluator making sure that whatever we're doing here is working effectively to actually answer the, the task at, at hand. But this design helps us sometimes prevent the infinite loop that we have uh, over in this example here. OK. Um... It looks like your generator and maybe even your evaluator have access to a bunch of tools. How do they use that, like test generation? Yeah, so again, this is all just things that when we think about AI, we're connecting you know, maybe via model context protocol or even just having tools that are available to the model. And as we think about using something like test-driven development here, we may actually want our tests to be written before we even do our code execution to make sure that we actually are you know, meeting the goals before we have code to actually validate for it. Okay. I know test-driven development. 
I don't know how it fits in here. I'm going to need more words. Good call out. So when we talk about test-driven development, in reality, we're starting with the end in mind with our plan. And with the end in mind, we may be writing tests that help to describe what we have in mind at the end and then giving the system the tests that it should actually be designing to to meet the desired outcome. Okay, so you could actually have an entire separate thing over here that's generating tests and then bring them all together at this final evaluation step. Tell me more about this. Why isn't it, why do you have two? Yeah, so in evaluation, maybe we have this evaluation which is just for a single task, mm. but we have an overall evaluator where we wanna say, hey, based on the goals or, or the tests that we have, are we meeting the outcome that we had in mind? And I drew it this way just to show that you know, some of the, the different pieces here may have access to different tools or even different contexts based on the actual task and, and each step that we have in mind. And as we know, sometimes having you know, less context for individual steps can reduce distractions and sometimes ultimately produce better code. Okay, I follow. All right, most important question. Who won Agent Design Dance Off? Okay, I'm gonna give this one to you, but I wanna point out that my three boxes of happiness over here is just like a higher altitude version of your very detailed agent design system over here. They have a lot in common, and this plan, execute, evaluate loop is one part of that. That is actually uh, very true. So if you'd like to read more about different ways to build coding agents or different ways to work with coding agents, check out the links in the description box below. And with, and with that, that, happy prompting, prompting everyone! Thank you.